Welcome back to Smart Life. I'm Dr. Gina, and I have in studio with me somebody, a longtime friend, an activist, uh, somebody who knows film so well. She is a longtime producer of many films, most recently Runaway Slave, a great, great film that nobody should miss if they really want to understand what freedom is, because what we are looking at really is uh, a form of slavery in our culture, and uh, people don't even see it a lot of times. And she's here to point it out to us, Be Bev Zaslow. Welcome to Smart Life. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you. Now, um, we, we've been seeing this, you know, I, I hear from people all the time, they'll say, you know, why doesn't Hollywood produce more family-friendly movies? One of the hardest things to do, I know, as a mother of five children right. who vary in ages, that it's really hard to take your family to a movie. Right. You say that might be changing. That got me all excited today when we talked about that. So tell us more. Well, there's a little bit of both. I mean, when you look at a film like Ted, which, well, granted, it's very funny, but it's despicable, some of what's in there. You mm -hmm. could not take a family to see that. You couldn't take your children. But you do have films like Blindside, um, and that's a film that made close to $255 million in the box office. You have Passion of the Christ. It made almost $400 million yeah. around the world. When Hollywood sees this, the studios are recognizing that they need to start doing faith-based movies now. So they are starting to do films. When you look at something like The Dark Knight or the Spider-Man movies, these films have themes in them. Superman, they have themes in them that are religious, that are based on uh, good you know, faith. They're based on family values. They're pro-America. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is also that films that are pro-America um, all this, all the values that we hold dear, these films do very, very well internationally. So the studios have to sort of listen to this because that's where the money is. Well, you pointed out in our conversation, our sort of pre-interview that we did, a real dichotomy, and I thought this was fascinating, that most of these producers in Hollywood, many of them we know, right. um, they, they will... They will, they in their own lives, right. they're, they're very, they want the government out of their business. They don't want the government in their business. And yet, when they make a film, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they, they're all supportive of, I said that wrong, let me back up. What they do is they support big government politicians. Right. Then when they make a film, they tend to play the government as this creepy spy, right. just like it really the actually bad guy. is. Yeah. Um, they obviously, in their own lives, they're executives, they're bosses, and yet when they make films, they make all the bosses look like right. bubbling idiots. Many of them fathers, and evil. yet you can't find a father in, depicted in a film that looks like he has a brain. Right. And so why this massive chasm between their lives and what they want to depict on television. I still say it comes back to the money. Why are there so many films and why is there so much entertainment where we have all these guns and the, everybody is in there and they're fighting and they're 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 defending and themselves. And yet they're all for gun control That's in their correct. outside lives. Right, right, right. It makes no sense to no, me. No, it doesn't. At all. But it comes back to the dollar, the almighty dollar. Because and also, you know, they they lose sight of religion and they become enslaved to the government in many, many ways. Runaway Slave is all about how government entitlements really just create a new, whole new form of dependency, and it makes people completely dependent upon the government. But government is their religion. Their religion is what this big, massive machine is going to do for them, and they believe in it. And um, they, they just kind of lose sight. However, the money is still the almighty dollar that's going to come back to them, and they have to they have to play to that because so the you other... say that the money being the almighty dollar as it is to yeah. them, and and that's okay. That's business. You know, right. we, we all we're capitalists. It's we're show all business. pro that, and, and and in show business, perhaps even more so a little bit. But but so you say that it is that pursuit of the almighty dollar that's going to force them. You believe to start making some more faith based films and right. to rec recognize sort of the fiber. We recently had the whole Duck Dynasty inc mm -hmm. incident, mm -hmm. I guess before before the end of the former year and. And, and you look at that and you say, you know, look, A&E, for the first time that I've ever seen, conformed to um, right. freedom of speech proponents rather than um, the politically correct elite and minority, vast minority, I want to point correct. out, too. It has something changed? Well, again, it's coming back to the dollar. They realized what that there was a revolution going on from the viewers. They had to make the viewers happy. So they they caved on it. This is just, it, it's the way it but works. But that's pretty unprecedented. We don't, well, we don't very often see a, a company like A&E uh, caving that publicly, blinking, 
that publicly. That was that right. was really a moment There's, that I think I think truth seekers out there can stop and celebrate that, don't yes, you? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's like Chick Fil A. I was in yeah. the air. I was flying cross country the day that was going on, and I was online and watching it all across the country. It was as it was happening, and people won't stand for it anymore. It's not just uh, you know the flyover country. Those people have a lot of control over what goes on, and it shows you how much control they have over the media and how they can change something. The good news is that with these films and with the media, what we see that has great value. Even a film like Parental Guidance, if you look at what that is talking about and what's happening in that movie, um, it, it's all about what we believe in. And that filters into society and children are watching these things and they, they, they get the message and it, it seeps in. So they say um, they don't want our morality imposed on entertainment or uh, in their buildings. We're going to talk a little later about the Mount Soledad Cross. Mm -hmm. um, there are other examples, and it's always about us imposing our morals. But when they're the ones with the millions and literally billions to spend to infiltrate our culture, Who's really imposing their values on whom? Well, there's a double standard, but they would never admit to it. I mean, we're hearing right now what Hillary Clinton has been saying behind the scenes, and you're, you're hearing that a lot of what's going on, it was strictly for political reasons and not for what was being said. So they'll never admit to it. It's only if it's pointed out in such a way that they're sort of caught with their hand in the cookie jar. Mm -hmm. As someone inside the industry, Bev, how dangerous is the collaboration between the political power elite and the Hollywood power elite? Oh, I think it's really dangerous because you have people who are not all that well informed. Look at Dennis Rodman right now. Dennis Rodman is hanging out and partying with a, a mass murderer and he's yeah. lost his mind. So what happens is, is you have people who for whatever their reasons are. They get involved in something, they don't know all the facts, they take a side, and they may be very, very misguided and wrong, but yet they're backing a, a political machine and um, they're doing the work for uh, very bad people. And that's where it's dangerous because okay. they're just not informed. Let's talk dollars and cents for mm -hmm. a moment. How can we, most people don't understand how the actual box office works, how viewership works. I had right. someone, you know, mad at me because I went on ABC's Wife Swap. I had people mad at me because I do interviews with Al Jazeera. Um, and, and I have people mad at me because I, I watched a certain show on an, an Alphabet Soup Network, right. as, they, as we like to refer <laughs> to them. What really does uh, give money and validation to the bad actors in Hollywood and what doesn't. And for example, let's start with the let's start with the box office because I know that seeing movies in the first few days is critical. You've yes. explained all of this to me. But if there's a small film that's trying to really make it, tell us how important it is and how exactly to be supportive in the grassroots effort toward making that film a success. Well, in a small independent film, it may not go through the traditional ways of distribution in the major theaters and right. if it does it's being self-distributed but support the films buy the DVDs buy the digital downloads support it let it be known show up show up push it out a lot of what we do in the grassroots movement is we get involved and we uh, start really pushing the message out pe person to person to person mm -hmm. and that's how it grows and um, that's really how you have to do it and then the advertisers of course I mean exactly what happened with A&E they will back out of something or they'll support something if they see that that's what the viewers really want. So if you're unhappy about something that's happened, do let it be known. But I would also caution and say be fair about it because, you know, it's a crazy, it, you have to look at both sides sometimes and really try to come to a compromise in the middle. But you have to also have the courage of your convictions and back what you believe. So it is important that if you are going to see, what if you want to see a movie but you don't want to support that producer? Because maybe that producer, maybe the movie isn't particularly offensive, but the producer has done some politically offensive things. So you don't want to support that production team. Maybe even the star of the show right. has taken a political stand you don't like. So you don't want to support them, but you'd really like to see the movie. If you wait till the movie comes out as a dollar movie, is that a good way to do it instead of seeing it up front? How can you, how can you still there's, make your political there's point? There still is money to be derived through that. There are all sorts of revenue streams and they just go, uh, people don't even realize that there are so many different revenue streams. Mm -hmm. If you really don't want to support somebody, then don't see it. Then don't see the movie. Then you Make can't that stand. see the movie. But if, you know, or wait, if you see something in the first, uh, the first days of a film being at the theaters, yes, then the distributor is getting the most amount of money and then it's being filtered down that way. 
So uh, the do's and the don'ts. Uh, do you see mm -hmm. the movies early? Right? Do pay full price for the ticket when you want to support that Absolutely. movie. Absolutely. You want to support the message. Do bring friends. Do engage in social media. I heard yes. that in a uh, sort of in a, in a encapsulated from you. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything I'm missing on that as far as really getting out there and supporting the movies that are that are lifting up our culture rather than tearing it down? Um, a lot of this is also word of mouth. Be very very supportive. Or if you're unhappy about something, let it be known. Let it be known. And do it in a way that's civil. Yes, always simple. I think that's such an important thing to point out. Bev, thank you so much for being with us. Bev Zaslow, you can continue to look for her work as she will continue to be involved in production for sure. Up next, what role does religion play in our government and what role should it play? My next guest will give us a status on the First Amendment and the first, uh, what rights we really do have to exercise on our freedom in religion in America. Remember, coming up later in the show, so we're going to go to your calls too, so stay with us. More Smart Life comes up right after this.